On December 20th, 1976, 14-year-old Kenneth Jumper Jr. was walking along the Lehigh River in the borough of Eastside, Pennsylvania, in Carbon County, around 4.30 p.m. He was familiar with this area, as he would go trapping there. He noticed something he had not seen when he had been there just a week earlier, a suitcase. Near it, he saw something horrifying, a human head with dark hair. He ran home to tell his 19-year-old brother Richard what he saw, and the two of them then called the Pennsylvania State Police. A total of three suitcases, all spray-painted black, were found at the scene. They had contained the remains of a young woman and the nearly full-term female fetus she had been carrying. Investigators believed that the woman's killer had thrown the suitcases from the bridge that carried Interstate 80 over the river. He or she may have intended for them to go into the river, but they instead hit the ground, causing at least one of them to open up. The young woman had been strangled and shot once in the neck. She had been dismembered with the pieces, some of which were badly mutilated, then placed into the luggage. Her unborn child had been removed from her womb and also placed in one of the suitcases. The young woman's initial autopsy estimated that she had died sometime between December 17th and December 20th, but police would later say that they believed she was killed within 24 hours of her discovery on the 20th. Pages from the Northern New Jersey edition of the September 26th, 1976 Sunday Daily News were found inside of the suitcases, as was a piece of chenille fabric that could have come from a robe or a blanket. The young woman was believed to be Caucasian and in her late teens or early 20s. She was estimated to have been approximately 5 feet 4 inches tall and 150 pounds. Her killer had cut off her nose and ears, but a sketch of what she may have looked like in life was developed and circulated. Authorities could not match her with a missing persons report or find anyone who recognized the sketch, and without an identity for their victim, their investigation into her murder stalled. The unidentified remains were preserved at the city morgue in Philadelphia for almost seven years, until August of 1983, when they were returned to Carbon County. A local pastor presided over the internment of the unknown woman and her child in the Carbon County Potter's Field, now known as the Lorry Town Road Cemetery, near Weatherly, Pennsylvania. Their simple grave marker read simply Beth Doe. Since the young woman's identity was unknown and her family could therefore not be informed of her final resting place, local residents took up the responsibility of visiting the grave and leaving flowers there in their place. In addition to becoming an adopted member of the Carbon County community, the young woman, known only as Beth Doe, also garnered national attention, with individuals from all over the country following the case and suggesting possible identities of the young woman. Police remained dedicated to the case, even as years went on without an identification, utilizing new technologies to try to give Beth Doe back her name as they became available. In the decades that followed her death, isotope analysis, more advanced facial reconstructions, and DNA were all used to try to identify her. Her remains were exhumed in 2007 to collect more forensic evidence for testing. Numerous missing women were investigated to see if they could be Beth Doe, but they were all ultimately excluded. More than four decades would pass before answers were found in the case, but when they finally came, the identities of both Beth Doe and her killer would be discovered. On March 31st, 2021, 63-year-old Luis Sierra, a married father of two, was arrested at his home in the Ozark Park neighborhood of Queens, New York, and charged with one count of criminal homicide. He was arraigned in Queens Criminal Court and held without bail, pending his extradition back to Pennsylvania. Sierra's arrest came as a shock to his neighbors, who could not imagine him committing such a crime. They spoke to the New York Daily News about how kind he was and how they felt as though he were a part of their families. Sierra had been 19 years old when Beth Doe was killed. Pennsylvania State Police announced that they had also been able to finally identify her. She was Evelyn Colon of Jersey City, New Jersey, who had been just 15 years old at the time of her murder. Evelyn was one of five children, described by one of her brothers as a sweetheart who was somewhat of a mama's girl. She became pregnant around the time she turned 15 and moved into an apartment with the baby's father, Luis Sierra, who had been her family's neighbor. 
Sierra was abusive and jealous, and sometimes locked Evelyn inside of their apartment. Evelyn told her mother that if anything happened to her, Sierra was involved. Evelyn remained in close contact with her family after she moved out. One day in mid-December of 1976, she told her mother that she was not feeling well. When her mother went to the apartment Evelyn shared with her boyfriend to bring her soup, Evelyn was not there, and she was told by neighbors that the couple had moved out. In January of 1977, Evelyn's family received a letter stating that she had given birth to a nine-pound baby boy she named after his father and was living in Connecticut, which was where the letter had been postmarked. The letter further stated that she would reach out to her family should she need anything. It is widely reported in the media that the Cologne family did not report her missing because of this letter. However, PA Homepage, who interviewed one of Evelyn's brothers and one of her nephews, reports that they did try to report her missing, but police would not take a report because of the letter. Due to a house fire, the Colognes were left without even pictures of Evelyn to look at in her absence. Evelyn's family desperately wanted to find her. Being without Evelyn, even if it was because she had willingly gone off to start a new life with her boyfriend and new baby, was devastating to her mother. She would walk around Jersey City looking for Evelyn, and sit inside of her home looking out her window at people passing on the street to see if any of them could be her daughter. The final words she said before she died were to her son, find Evelyn. The family did look for Evelyn, especially once they had access to the internet, using it for research and messaging people they believed they could be related to through Evelyn, whose profiles they found on social media. Evelyn's nephew, Luis Colon Jr., was not born until seven years after his aunt went missing. He grew up hearing stories about her and hoping that she really had built a happy life with her child somewhere outside of Jersey City. Around 2017, he decided to try to use his DNA to try to reconnect with his long-lost aunt and cousin. He ordered DNA test kits from several commercial DNA companies, believing his chances of success would be greater if he used multiple services and their respective databases. He hoped that either Evelyn or her child had their DNA tested and put in one of these databases, and that the family could be reunited with them. When he received his results, however, he was only matched to very distant cousins in the various databases. In March of 2021, however, he was contacted by law enforcement, informing him that they had run the DNA of a murder victim through one of the databases he had uploaded his DNA to, and found him as a close familial match. The Colognes knew that Evelyn was the only person it could be, which authorities confirmed with their cooperation. Luis was disappointed with this outcome, as his goal in uploading his DNA was to be reunited with his aunt and cousin. He and the rest of Evelyn's family were horrified to learn that both she and her daughter were dead, and that they had been killed in such a brutal fashion. They are trying to find some peace in finally having answers, and knowing that Evelyn had not vanished from their lives willingly. Evelyn's family has named her daughter Emily Grace Cologne. Evelyn's two sisters believe she had planned during her pregnancy to use the name Emily if her baby was a girl, and they felt the name Grace would honor the grace of God. The Colognes view the timing of Evelyn's identification as fortuitous, in light of her life and their faith. Evelyn's identification was announced just weeks before what would have been her 60th birthday on April 17th, and just days before Easter, which was on April 4th. I think that, in light of the whole Easter season, with the Christ resurrection, her identity, her case, her life, the justice for her murder, is being truly resurrected from her grave, right? And it's a powerful season for us as a family, said Evelyn's niece, Miriam Cologne Veltman. Evelyn's family now lives throughout the country and are working to travel to Pennsylvania in spite of financial constraints and travel restrictions. They have started a GoFundMe so that they can all visit Evelyn and Emily's grave and further memorialize them. The Colognes also want to visit the area so that they can meet the community that has embraced Evelyn and Emily while they were lost to them. Carbon County adopted her. It's incredible. You all kept her memory alive knowing about her and praying for her. That's so powerful that this county was praying for my family and how you loved someone you didn't know. We're so thankful for all of you. You're all family now, too, said Evelyn's niece, Miriam. 
while Luis Sierra has been charged and arrested, authorities are still building their case against him and hope that there are witnesses who can provide more details about the case. The Pennsylvania State Police, along with the Carbon County District Attorney's Office, have set up a tip line in conjunction with Crime Stoppers and ask anyone with information to come forward. Authorities had gone to Sierra's home the week before his arrest, and he had claimed to not know Evelyn at all. When they continued to press the issue, he eventually admitted to dating her and getting her pregnant. He said she had threatened to leave him in the past, so when he came home to their apartment in Jersey City one day and she was gone, he had assumed she went to live with her mother and moved back in with his father shortly thereafter. He eventually admitted to mailing the letter received by Evelyn's family while he and Evelyn were on a day trip in Connecticut to look at apartments, but had no explanation as to why the letter was not mailed until well after Evelyn's death. He is next due in court in New York on May 17th. While they are grateful for the answers they now have, and for Sierra's arrest, Evelyn's family is aware that there is still a lot of work to be done to get them the full story of what happened to Evelyn, and to get Evelyn justice. Let me tell you something. I can't wait for him to come to Pennsylvania, because I want to look at his eyes and ask him why, Evelyn's brother, Luis Colon Sr., said of Sierra after his arrest. While the family is grateful he is in custody, they know he is not considered guilty until he pleads guilty or is convicted. Until then, I'm not going to rest because, to me, the mission is not done, Evelyn's nephew, Luis Colon Jr. said. We got her name, that's important, and we got the word out, but now we have to get some justice here 